Hi there, uh, I'm Valerie Tan and today I'm going to be giving you a talk about why movies matter or how to understand the culture around you without really trying. So I know that I'm going to give you a talk today about the importance of film, but I'd like to give a little backstory uh, with me and film. Because when I was young, I was not a fan of cinema. Like the first movie that I ever went to was Happy Feet. Uh, when in 2006 my parents took me and my sister to the cinema to have a fun experience and I must say it was more scarring than it was fun I got so overwhelmed that my mom and I had to leave the movie theater because I was so scared and to this day I am still afraid of anthropomorphic tap dancing penguins because I you know encounter them so often and what my six-year-old self didn't realize is how much that art medium really matters in a larger context. Because it truly changes the world. And whenever I say something like that, I think, God, you sound like such a pretentious little prick. But the truth is, I wouldn't be saying that if I didn't really believe it. Culture and cinema have always had a very symbiotic relationship. Popular culture inspires filmmakers to create movies which either fit or diverge from the current social landscape and then directly influence the culture which they are a part of, which is very simple. You know, movies directly influence culture and culture directly influences the way we look at things and that indirectly influences movies. So I think that it's really good to try and have a conscious understanding of how that works. Because I believe that most people have a subconscious understanding of the way this works, but not everyone understands how it works on a very, very conscious level. I've just said the word conscious too many times in that sentence. I believe that movies really change the world. And there are three ways that movies do this. Um, first of all, I think they help you understand the past. Secondly, I think they give you an impression or an expression for the present and what's happening right now. And best of all, I think that the right movies give you hope and inspiration for what the future might be like. And when you take the first point, movies help you understand the past. I think it's always good to remember that movies are a product of their environment and they never tell you the truth because they're always there to entertain their audiences. Even documentaries are f and even educational films often are framed in a way to both inform and persuade their audiences. And with this in mind, the one thing that all films are actually really good at is helping contemporary audiences understand which stories filmmakers from the time believed to be worthy of telling and by extension, the types of people and qualities which were prevalent, popular, and seen as a benchmark for what normal stories are about at those times. And the types of stories are directly influenced by the time they created it. Well, I highly doubt a film like 1984's Revenge of the Nerds would be made today. And as such, looking at it shows the difference in perspective on the world in the 1980s and today. Watching it back now, as one of the titular nerds puts on a full body costume and rapes a woman who doesn't realize who he is and then gets applauded for it and congratulated for it, I think to myself, what is this movie doing? And who is this aimed at? Who would think, oh yeah, that's a very normal sequence of events that I believe is plausible or even represents anything that's happening right now? 80s, 80s audiences, apparently. Because guess what? That movie made $60 million. And yes, huge scale movies make more money nowadays. But $60 million, that's a lot of money. Do you have any idea how much money I could make? How much things I could buy with $60 million? I could buy 60 pirate islands for $1 million. I could buy like 10 very expensive Bugattis. I could own an ocean beach house in Orange County and still 
I have money left over. That's a lot of money for a group of like socially awkward nerds taking advantage of women. That is a lot of money. And you know, you might say, but Valerie, that's just one example. I could give you a whole list if I wanted to. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give you a whole list of movies that, you know, have very questionable plot points. Sixteen Candles, Breakfast at Tiffany's, The Forty-Year-Old Virgin, West Side Story, Blade Runner, Gone with the Wind, Love Actually, American Beauty, which by the way is not as beautiful and much uglier than the title suggests, Overboard, Indiana Jones of the Temple of Doom, I could go on and on, but I'd run out of fingers and when maybe I'd, you know, come across a movie that you really love and then your whole day is ruined. And what the problem is with movies that present ideas, you know, from the time is that they teach the audiences at the time that this behavior is normal, that it's worthy of putting on screen, that it's a normal kind of story. And it's a reflection of the gender dynamics at the time, of the racial ideas at the time. And sure, you might say, but Valerie, that was the past, but they didn't know better back then. Don't ruin my movie with your own PC culture. And to be honest, you might be right. You know, Blade Runner, for all its faults, still an amazing story that's super inventive and shot really beautifully. But I am not trying to ruin your favorite movie. I'm trying to explain that as a contemporary modern audience, you should be conscious of the fact that movies from the past represent outdated ideals, and that maybe you shouldn't take everything from them as gospel truth. Because mainstream movies from the past often portray women as being submissive and having no power and no rights and black people as being violent criminals and LGBTQ people as being unnatural and inhuman. And whether we like it or not, whether we want to admit it, those ideas permeated the culture of the time and are still very prevalent today. And if every piece of media showcases these kinds of themes, then it's not a reflection of just the time, but a continued confirmation and encouragement that the behavior is correct, that it's a right way of living life. And I realize, sure, that this might be a negative way of looking at the importance of films from the past. But it's true. And it's not that only bad things happened, but that these past films much darker prejudices because those were the stories being told and those were the people making these movies those nerds were the ones who were telling these stories and so their hopes and insecurities were the ones being immortalized on screen and it's always good to think about that and to consciously make yourself aware of that as you watch these movies but what I think movies also do is they give you an expression for the present, which is the second point. And again, stories being told are a direct relation and reaction to the world they are created in by the creators of this movie. And one of the most important things that movies are really good at is helping you understand different people and who have different experiences in life than your own. Because movies are able to communicate these stories in a visual and auditorial way and show depictions of other people which we normally would not empathize or even talk to or see in the media, in like the news. And they cause audiences to at least sympathize with stories on screen. And this is especially true in films where the protagonist is someone whose story we've rarely seen before or don't see every day. And then in some way or another, we're able to connect with these characters because the bottom line, most movies tell stories, all movies tell stories about people. And we might not understand what these characters go through, but we understand their emotions, their feelings, their reactions to things. And we can maybe convey a little bit more 
of ourselves in them. And to be honest, movies, for some people, they help them survive. Because movies can be escapist. You can, you can escape the reality of the world and the films that you watch. And you can help, they can help you find a voice for yourself when you feel like there are no words to express the things you want to say. A movie like The Perks of Being a Wallflower, if you connect it to the characters in that movie, if you feel their experiences and you watch it unfold, and you think, maybe it's okay, maybe who I am is okay. And I think it's especially important today, and it will always keep stay being important. If you think about movements like the Black Lives Matter movement, where you watch movies about police brutality, brutality and the effect of this on black communities, it doesn't mean you know what it feels like. It doesn't mean you understand the experience of being black in America or black anywhere in the world. You don't if you're not a black person. But you can see the cause and effect of the actions that the world around you has. A movie like Do the Right Thing, which shows a sh quite passive character who doesn't do much and who watches the world go by on the hottest day of the summer, shows the effect that police brutality has on these communities and, and how racism impacts people on a daily basis. And it lets audiences who might never really understand what it's like experience a story about it in a way that moves them both visually and auditorially. But to be honest, my favorite thing that movies do is they give you hope for the future. Because movies, while they are a reaction to the present, often allow filmmakers to come up with whatever they want and their own expression for the future. And in the most basic form, movies are a space for people to create something that hasn't been seen yet. And therefore, it allows filmmakers to depict something that they don't see in the world in order to create hope that maybe one day the world will be that way. Art, but movies especially, in I think a visceral way, are able to portray stories of other people, of triumphs, of the human condition, of what it's like to be a person in any way, shape, or form, and communicate that to other people. Forming a personal connection is something that shows the the positive side of specific characteristics can help you become more hopeful about who you are. In telling a story which hasn't been told many times before, it means that the audience you are telling the story to can acknowledge that yes, the story is worth telling, the story is worth is meaningful, and it gives you hope for the future. One of my favorite examples of this is a movie from uh, last year, a French movie called uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. It's a love story between two women set in this 18th century in France, and watching it, I felt myself come alive in a way. Not that I was dead before watching it, but a part of me woke up, I guess. These characters are people who I somewhat identify with, and their story is one where I can feel the atmosphere and their emotions in a visceral way. And it's almost unsettling, you know. Because it's very rare that you see lesbian films or any film whatsoever from the female gaze from this perspective. Often it's a very world-dominated vision and these characters are fetishized. But Portrait, on the Lady, Portrait of the Lady on Fire is a movie that taught me that it's okay to be who I am. And not only that, but also that my life is worth immortalizing in the story, that the person who I am is worthy of remembering. And watching Parasite win Best Picture at the Oscars this year, which seems like it was, I don't know, decades ago, but I feel like it may be just six or seven months ago, but really, it feels like a lot of time has passed between those things, between now and that happening. Watching Bong Joon-ho and his cast and crew come on stage to accept the award for best picture or something. I felt something about that, you know? Like, 
I looked at them on stage and thought, wow, they look like me. Kind of. I have bigger eyes, but they look like me. And even though I'm not as good looking and Korean as the cast and crew of Parasite, it meant something to me, somehow. And of course, there's still so much left to be done in a world of cinema. But I'd like to think that movies can sometimes give us an optimistic perspective. Especially since there are so many people getting access to cameras. It become, it's becoming cheaper and cheaper to make your own films, and so more and more stories from more and more voices are being presented to us on a daily basis. And these people are going to create beautiful movies that tell beautiful stories about an enormous range of people. And it can, it can push us that one step further into being better people. And that's important, because today, our society and world at large is kind of moving back to this idea of the other, of creating an enemy out of anyone who isn't like us. And I think that that's not the way things should be. And maybe naively so, I believe that movies can change that. If you watch something about someone who you might have prejudices about, but you understand their struggle and you identify with them, then maybe that's enough to change your mind. If you feel their pain, their happiness, their thoughts come through on screen, then maybe you think to yourself, we're not that different after all. Because we should go through our lives being empathetic people. And yeah, movies are definitely not the only way to become more empathetic. I know that. But for many people, it's a very easy way to do it. You can just, you know, put on Netflix or go on to the cinema. Well, not anymore, but go on Netflix or go on YouTube and, 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 and find these movies and watch them. And for more personal reasons, if you feel like you aren't worthy, if you feel like your story isn't significant enough in this world, if you have deep-rooted shame and you watch something that speaks to you and says, no, you are worth it, and you think to yourself, you know, maybe my life is worth living, and maybe my story is important, and I do have meaning, like, that's all the importance I'll need, and I think that's why movies matter.